And now let's talk about the four forces of flight. The four forces of flight are lift, acting upward, weight, acting down, thrust forward, and drag to the rear. Let's start by focusing just on lift. Now, a key thing to remember about lift is lift acts vertically but perpendicular to the relative wind. When air flows over an airfoil, that's called relative wind. The lift force will be perpendicular, that's a 90 degree angle, to the relative wind. The four forces of flight are balanced when the aircraft is in any steady state flight condition. Notice we didn't say the four forces of flight are equal. That's not entirely correct. And we didn't talk about the four forces of flight when the aircraft is transitioning between states of flight, say moving from straight and level to a climb, for example. But in any steady state, the forces are balanced. Now, in order to help us understand lift more thoroughly, we need to define a couple of terms. All right, a couple of terms we want to start by memorizing. First, camber. Camber refers to the curve of the airfoil, both its upper and lower surfaces. The leading edge and trailing edge. The leading edge refers to the very forward part of that airfoil. The trailing edge refers to the most rearward point of that airfoil. The next term to memorize is called cord line. Now, cord line is easy if we remember leading edge and trailing edge. Cord line is an imaginary line from the leading edge to the trailing edge. Next is relative wind. <clears throat> when we talk about relative wind, we mean the wind that's hitting the airplane because of the airplane's forward motion. One thing you can do when you think about relative wind is just reverse the terms. Relative wind is the wind relative to the motion of the airplane. If the airplane wasn't moving, there'd be no relative wind. If the airplane is moving faster, the relative wind is stronger. If the airplane's moving slower, the relative wind is weaker. Now, finally, with all of that in place, we can see a very important concept for pilots, and it's called angle of attack. The angle of attack is the angle between the cord line and the relative wind. Now, the cord line is from the leading edge to the trailing edge. So if the leading edge and trailing edge are stationary, the cord line doesn't move. The relative wind, however, may move relative to the motion of the airplane, so this angle of attack could get larger or smaller. When we talk about lift, um, let's think about the center of pressure versus lift on the airfoil. When we take that angle of attack and increase it, the center of lifting pressure moves forward. If we decrease that angle of attack, the center of lifting pressure moves aft. That's angle of attack and center of pressure. Critical concept. Related to that is angle of attack and airspeed. Now, <clears throat> if I want to change the speed of the airplane, the relative wind, as we said, will change. Stronger relative wind for a faster forward speed. A stronger relative wind uh, and with a faster speed will make a stronger lifting force. That means the angle of attack can actually be smaller. Okay, you see that here on your right. For a high 
speed, it'll be a lower angle of attack. If you work your way to your left, you'll see that at a lower speed, the angle of attack will have to be larger to get the same amount of lift. Now this is critical for us as pilots because that's how we control the speed of our airplane. That brings us to one final very important concept, and that is called the critical angle of attack. Now, if I continue to increase the angle of attack, I continue to increase the amount of lift, and I move the center of pressure forward. That much we know. How far could I increase that angle of attack? Well, eventually, the air over the top surface will start to separate from the camber of that airfoil. Now, if I go far enough, if we increase that angle enough, that airflow separation will no longer be smooth. Pilots refer to that as a stalled airfoil, and we call that a stalled wing. Exceeding the critical angle of attack, the airflow stalls, the airfoil is stalled, and the aircraft is not producing enough lift to support itself. It's important to remember the airplane stalls always at the same angle of attack, but at any airspeed flight attitude or weight.